Hey guys, how's it going? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so I do have a bit of a confession to make, I'm afraid. I'm really sorry, but I bought a new guitar. Woo! <laughs> okay, so uh, new guitar day, wicked. Um, now, I suppose the question is, can I afford it? Probably not. Do I need it? Probably not. But do I want it? Yes! <laughs> so, um, yeah, I thought I would treat myself because, you know, I work hard and, um, you know, why not, right? <laughs> uh, now, um, <coughs> yeah, let's get on with it. Now, as you can see, it is a Fender guitar. Um, probably my favourite brand of guitar, but over the years I've had my eye on quite a few different Fenders. Um, most notably, probably the Kurt Cobain signature Jaguar, you know, with the two Damasio humbuckers. Um, I'm afraid it is not that one in this case, but it is a guitar that I've wanted for quite a while. So uh, let's open it, shall we? Okay. <clears throat> let's open this bad boy. Ah, some case candy, that's pretty cool. An Allen key and a sticker. Wicked. <laughs> right, what else we got? Oh, a nice piece of cardboard. You can never have too much cardboard, can you? Um, <clears throat> right. It doesn't come with a gig bag, which is a bit of a disappointment, to be honest. I mean, in the description, it didn't say that it came with a gig bag, so, you know, silly me for expecting it, I suppose, especially in these sort of uh, tough times when companies are slightly cutting corners and, you know, trying to save money where they can, I suppose. Um, <clears throat> so, let's get rid of that. Now, what do we have mummified within the plastic? Is da 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 da. It is a <laughs> it is a Mexican Fender Mustang PJ bass. Now, I've been after a new bass guitar for quite a while now, just because of the fact that my one that I've been doing all the videos with, you know, all my bass videos with, is a Squire, not actually a Fender, even though it does say Fender on its headstock. Um, I'll just show you that. Even though this one does say Fender on the headstock, um, it's actually just a Affinity Squire. Um, what I did was I basically just scrubbed off the Squire and then, um, like put a Fender decal on it and then just resprayed it with some lacquer and then buffed it down. A uh, bit of a cheat I suppose but you know I hate the Squire logo it sucks and it's not like I was trying to trick anybody I just did it because I prefer the look of the Fender logo so um, yeah. <laughs> now back to the Mustang um, you can definitely tell that it's a much better quality instrument than the Squire not to shit on Squires of course you know for the money they are an absolute bargain but, you know, I felt like I've learned enough on the bass to sort of qualify for having a slightly better guitar, I guess, in my own opinion. Um, so, yeah, I just thought I'd treat myself. Plus, the Mustang is a... Um, let me just get rid of the root of that. Uh, plus, the Mustang is a short scale as well, where a uh, precision bass or a jazz bass is 34 inches. The Mustang, being a short scale, is only 30 inches. So, yeah, it does make it slightly easier if, you know... Transferring from being a guitar player going over to the bass, it does make the transition a bit less harsh. Um, but yeah, all I've got to do now is just take all these horrible stickers and everything off of it and, you know, the protect protective plastic and all that rubbish because, you know, I don't want that on there. It looks crap. <laughs> Wicked. Um, just take this fender sticker off as well. There we go. That's better. Is it in tune, I suppose? That's the question. Nope, <laughs> not even slightly. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take all these stickers off of it, off of like, you know, uh, 
the tuning heads and all that kind of thing, machine heads, whatever you want to call them. Um, get rid of all this crap and then I'll be back with some playing for you. So uh, yeah, see you in a second. Ooh. Okay, so I have now removed all of the detritus off of the guitar itself. Um, I'm sorry I didn't document myself doing that, you know, removing the uh, plastic off of the pick guard and the machine heads and all that kind of thing, but it's not really that interesting to be completely honest. So yeah, I don't know, we got a couple of Allen keys and an instruction manual, a Fender sticker, and then um, some price tags and stuff. Um, yeah, and the people at the factory signed it to said that they uh, like assembled it and prepped it and tested it and inspected it and all that kind of stuff. Usual game, you know what I mean? Usual caper. Um, yeah, again, sorry I didn't, you know, remove all the plastic in front of you on the camera, but if you would like an ASMR experience from the pick guard cover, here you go. <laughs> yeah, ASMR's weird. So the only main difference really between the two guitars is the fact that the Mustang is four inches shorter in scale than the PJ bass. Um, I decided to get the Mustang with the uh, sort of PJ pickup configuration just because I love the way it sounds and um, you sort of get the best of both worlds because it's like a PJ bass or a P bass and a jazz bass. Um, so yeah, you've got like, you know, the uh, Sort of two pickups on the Fender one. There is a Squire one that I was thinking about getting instead, uh, um, but to be honest, I already had a Squire bass anyway, and I thought if I'm going to get another one, I might as well make it an upgrade, right? Um, to be fair, the Squire Classic Vibe, I think it's a Classic Vibe um, Mustang, is a sort of more expensive, you know, guitar from the Squire range. 
but I thought I might as well just splash out and just, you know, go whole hog, I guess. I mean, not whole hog because this isn't an American Mustang. It's a, uh, like a Mexican one, like, you know, made in Mexico, but um, it's definitely an upgrade on like, you know, an Affinity Squire at least anyway. So yeah. Um, also, because it's a Mexican Fender, it matches my other guitars now as well, which is awesome. Um, yeah, because obviously this is a Squire bass, um, but I did decide to put the Fender decal on it, just just basically so that it matched my other guitars. Um, you know, that might seem a bit like disingenuous or something to some people, and you know, it might seem like I was trying to make it seem like I had a, you know, a Fender bass. Um, but I don't really, you know, I don't do these videos because I want people to sort of like know what guitars I've got. I do them because I want to show people how to play songs, and you know, it gives me an excuse to sort of like learn learn new songs, I guess. Um, I don't know, but yeah, I just did it for like my own aesthetic sort of uh, snobbery, I guess. It wasn't like I was trying to uh, pull the wall over anybody's eyes or anything like that. Um, but I am very happy now that I do have a proper Mexican Fender. Um, yeah, as I said, it's uh, I love the colour. I'm really happy with the colour. Um, I did used to have a Squire Fat Strat that was in this colour, actually, but it had the black pick guard. So it was very much like, it reminded me of a Billy Corgan Stratocaster. Um, there's a few that I liked of his where he had like a dark blue one with a black pit guard and I think he had a red one with a black pit guard as well, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I always liked the look of like his guitars and um, yeah, I, I like the uh, the Mustang bass because obviously it's kind of in the style of Kurt Cobain's Mustangs and all that kind of thing, but you know, what with it being a bass, um, you know, it, it sort of does dif differentiate for somewhat from uh, Kurt Cobain's style, I guess. Also, because Kurt Cobain was a massive advocate of Mustang guitars, I thought you know, I've got enough electric guitars, so if I'm going to get a bass guitar, I might as well get one in a shape that I really like. And um, yeah, obviously the Mustang, you know, screams Nirvana, doesn't it really? You know, Kurt Cobain was a massive Mustang fan. And um, yeah, not that Kurt played the bass, but I just thought it'd be really cool just to get a Mustang bass, basically. And again, with the shorter scale length, um, obviously the PJ bass being a 34 inch scale length from uh, bridge to nut, um, the Mustang is only 30 inches, so um, yeah, I mean, obviously four inches isn't that big, but you know, even one inch I think would make a massive difference. What the hell am I saying? <laughs> um, <coughs> what I'm saying is it's a more compact sort of sized base, so that does mean that, you know, the difference of a uh, four inches, four inches less from bridge to nuts does mean that the frets are slightly closer together as well. So um, being somebody who is unfortunately cursed with smaller hands, um, it does make it a lot easier for me to play the bass with a shorter scale length. And also for people that are going from playing the guitar um, and trying out the bass, um, getting a shorter scale bass is uh, definitely less of like, you know, a hard transition, I suppose. Uh, so yeah, and you know, I love the color as well. Like I said, I did used to have a Squire Strat in this color and I do miss that guitar kind of. So yeah, I don't know. Um, I think the only other option as well for this guitar was gold at the shop where I got it from and I don't really want another gold guitar because I've got a gold Les Paul which I never play um, but yeah this is a uh, I'm really impressed with this bass I have to say I think it sounds incredible um, it hasn't got any of the shortcomings that my Squire has um, you know I'm not going to sort of like criticize Squire guitars because you know they do the job if you need them to kind of thing but um, they definitely do have some shortcomings when it comes to like you know quality and uh, like the sound and stuff. Um, I mean, just out of the box, this guitar, you know, the setup was perfect. Um, obviously, it wasn't in tune because in transit, you know, you wouldn't really want to put it in tune because you don't want to put sort of stress on the wood and everything, like you know, as it's going from different temperatures, I guess. Um, but yeah, the setup was brilliant. It's um, you know perfectly intonated, and um, yeah, it just feels awesome to play. Like. Uh, yeah, I don't know, when I got the Squire originally, I had to do quite a bit of work to it just to sort of get it, you know, where I wanted it, playing-wise. Um, but obviously with this guitar straight out of the box, it was just, uh, it was fine. <laughs> you know, I plugged it in and um, tuned it up and it was fine, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so we've got one volume knob, one tone knob, and then the uh, pickup selector is a switch here, which I have to say is probably the only thing I don't like about this guitar is the fact that the toggle switch is here. I mean, would it have killed them to put it like here or something? Or, I don't know, just somewhere out the way because, you know, I feel like my hand's gonna hit that <laughs> while I'm playing, but um, I don't know, it just looks kind of goofy being there, but it's fine. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. This is definitely a guitar I would recommend if anybody out there is, you know, upgrading from a Squire to something else, if like you're getting your second bass or something. Um, yeah, this is definitely a good way to go. Obviously, I've only played it for like sort of half an hour, 45 minutes ish, and um, you know, there could be things about it that I don't like in the future, but for now, um, I'm very impressed, and um, yeah, it's just uh, very rewarding to play. Um, it has a Powell Ferro fretboard, which is a bit unfortunate. I would have preferred rosewood, but that's just the way things are these days. Um, maybe if I get some lemon oil, I could sort of like darken it down slightly, but I'm kind of getting to the point now where, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. So I don't know, we'll see. Um, but yeah, <laughs> if you can't quite afford the Mexican Fender version of this guitar, there are a few available from Squire. Um, there was a Seafoam Green one that I was considering getting, but like I said, I felt, you know, if I'm gonna have an upgrade, I might as well go for like a proper upgrade, I guess, and you know, go sort of like, you know, splash out a little bit and treat myself because I don't want to sort of like buy another Squire and then, you know, a couple years down the line think, oh, I wish I had a Fender, do you know, do you know what I mean? Just, that's just the way I think, you know, some people don't mind that and that's cool, that's brilliant, more power to you. But for me, um, I don't know, I just, I like to know that I've got like, you know, a proper Fender in my hands, I guess. I don't know, that's just my own issue, I guess. But, um, for me personally, I definitely notice like a step up in quality going from a Squire to a Fender. Um, you know, whether or not that's in my own head or not, I don't know. But if it makes me play better, then uh, that's got to be a good thing, right? <laughs> um, so yeah. <laughs> so as I said, uh, very happy with my purchase. Um, I would definitely recommend it to anybody out there who is looking for a Mustang style bass guitar. Um, other than that, there's not really a hell of a lot for me to say. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, please feel free to hit like and subscribe and all those awesome things that you guys always do. Uh, we're coming up on 20,000 subscribers now, so that's pretty cool. That'll be an exciting day when that happens. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, I'm going to get back to doing covers ASAP. Um, but until then, take it easy, guys, and hopefully I shall see all of you in the next one. Peace. Boo 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 bo